So as you can see, um, this is part two. This is part two dealing with speaking in tongues. This lesson is dealing with speaking in tongues. It's tongues of the most high or it's tongues of demonic world. Is it of the demonic world? And um, this is part two. So we're going to get straight into it. We went over Acts 2 and 1, um, dealing with the day of uh, Pentecost. We went over Acts 2 and 1. I'm going to blow up the screen a little bit for you guys so you can see it. So uh, just a little bit, not too much. I'm going to blow it up just a little bit. Um, okay, so uh, that thing is too big. So we went over uh, Acts 2 and 1, dealing with the day of Pentecost. Uh, so, and we explained basically when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, how they received the gifts of tongues, okay? How they received the gift of tongues. Now, we went over what tongues are concerning the Bible. Tongues is just basically uh, another language. Tongues is basically another language. Uh, speaking in another language, speaking in a foreign language. That's all tongues means, okay? And we went over that, how they spoke the languages are of the Jews right here. The devout man, how the apostles, the disciples, they spoke the languages of these Jews that was devoted man, these Jews that came out of every nation under heaven to Jerusalem to worship. The disciples, the apostles that spoke Hebrew, they spoke the devoted man, they spoke these Jews, the devoted man out of every nation. They spoke the their language for the very first time. The Hebrews, the apostles, spoke uh, different languages that these Jews came from, these regions that these Jews came from, they spoke their language for the very first time as the Spirit gave them utterance. Because the Spirit gave them utterance. And we went over that, uh, how St. John 4, 14, 26 tell you that the Comforter would teach you all things. So the Comforter taught the apostles uh other tongues, other languages for the very first time. They taught them foreign languages for the very first time. And these apostles spoke in a foreign language for the very first time because remember their primary language was Hebrew. And they was able to speak in these devout Jew language, languages in order for these devout Jews to take the gospel back to their respective places, okay? That's, that's basically what Acts 2 is all about. Okay, and we'll give you, like I say, we'll give you more, more information concerning tongues dealing with Acts chapter 2. And those of you that may not know what speaking in tongues are concerning the scriptures, it's just speaking in another language. Now, I know that you've been taught um, throughout your lifetime that speaking in tongues is such this. I want you to see this clip because many of you have been led to believe that this is speaking in tongues. And this is of this is of God, but it's not. Check this out. Speak. Who are you? Rika, Lebra Katoria Baba Baba Kindoria Masindo Rika Baba Rika Masondoria Makundoria Baba Baba Syria Mama Kandalia Baba Kindalia Rumal Kilia Mama Kandalia Basandalia Kere Ria Kolia Baba 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 That's not speaking in tongues, okay? That's not speaking in tongues, people. Okay, and many, many of you have been led to believe that this is the power of God. This is the power of the Heavenly Father in Christ, and it's not. Okay, according to the Bible, this is demonic, sat demonic satanic activity at its highest, its highest potential. Okay, this is not biblical. This is not scriptural. This, the Bible.
also a manifestation of evil spirits. Okay. And when you see this in your church, then we already know, according to the Bible, this is not biblical. Your church is a satanic, you're a satanic organization. Your church has been infestated with demons and satanic activity. And if this is going on in the church, if this is going on in your church, then you should question your pastor concerning the Bible and, and, and he should sit you down and be able to show you the scriptures concerning this because the Bible does not support this madness. Once again, it does not support this madness. And um, we're going to go further on with the lesson to give you an extra take on tongues. Okay. And um, I just want to elaborate a little bit on tongues. If you don't know about tongues. Okay. So uh, as you see right here. So you can see right here, man, what she was just saying. That's not, that's not, that's not biblical. Okay. That's not biblical. All right. And, um, it's not biblical none whatsoever. And, uh, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you something else. Let me pull up a new tab. Uh, pull up a new tab. You guys stay with me. I am online. And, um, you're just talking about basically tongues. And I'm going to give you a little history on tongues. This is part two. People, this is part two. I'm going to give you a little history on tongues. So I am on Google. Uh, Google.com. Com. And uh, I'm just going to give you a little history on tongues. So you can see what exactly what I'm talking about. See, it says... Uh, Glossolalia, often understood among Pentecostal and Christians as speaking in tongues. It's the fluid vocalizing of speech like syllables that lack any readily comprehended meaning. In some cases, as part of, uh, let me blow this down. In some cases, as part of religious practice. But this is not right here. Like I said, it's the definition of tongue. This is not religious practice at all, y'all. Not religious practice. It says, uh, glossolalia, gl glossolalia. And, and, and we showed you according to what tongues meant in the Greek. That's almost synonymous with what we showed you earlier in part one. When we, when we showed you what tongues basically mean in part one, um, and the Greek, which is the Greek dictionary. When you go into the Greek dictionary, tongues and the Greek 1100, or some may say 1100, is, gl is glossa or glossa, glossa. And um, it just means another language. And you can see glossa, glossa is synonymous to this right here, which is glossolalia. And it's often understood among Pentecostal Christians because Pentecostal Christians, like, 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 we, like, we, saw, like we saw earlier, Speak this gibberish right here, okay? Speak this gibberish. That's what Pentecostal Christians speak. That's what they do in these what? They do in these Pentecostal churches, these Pentecostal Christians as speaking in tongues. Okay, they call that speaking in tongues. But if you're a real, if you're a real, if you're a real Bible seeker, or if you know the truth. And uh, if you know any, uh, if you know any precepts concerning the Holy Bible, that what you just saw is not tongues, y'all. It's but they, but they say that's tongues, but it's not. It's a demonic activity. So these Pentecostal Christians that speaking in tongues is the fluid vocalizing of speech. Okay, it's like it's like vocalizing, vocalizing a speech like syllables that lack any any readily or readily comprehending meaning. They don't have a meaning to it. Okay? They lack any readily comprehending meaning in some cases as part of religious practice. They these Pentecostal Christians, fake ass Christians, dumbass Christians, man, y'all need to wake up. I pray that the most I may have mercy on y'all soul, that y'all may get this thing together, man. But anyways, these so called Christians uh, pagan worshipers, you can say all Christians are satanic worshipers and pagan worshipers. And yeah, I said it. And if you feel offended, I don't give a damn, man. Do your research and wake your ass up. All right. Because all Pentecostal Christians, all you Pentecostal Christians are satanic worshipers. And you're going to die in thermonuclear destruction when the Mosai comes back. 
You're going to get put to death if you don't repent and turn and, and seek the truth, man. And know your language and know your culture and know your heritage and know who you are. You so-called Negroes are the real Jews, man. You ain't no goddamn Christians, all right? So this tongue, this tongue activity, what goes on in the pagan-ass temples, man, it, it, it says it's like a fluid vocalizing of speech-like syllables that lack. It do what? It lack that, that, that lack any readily comprehending meaning. Don't have no goddamn meaning to it. All right? And that's why we went over that in part one concerning 2 Timothy 2 and 15 because it don't have any meaning to it. We're going to show you this again, man. And we have to take take all day to show you what I mean. I want you to get this. All right? So we went over part one. We went over this already, but we're going to show you again. 2 Timothy 2 and 16. It says, but shun profane and vain babylons. Stay away from profane and vain babylons. That's what you hear in the church today. Shun profane babylons, for they will increase in ungodliness. And like I said, according to the dictionary of tongues, tongues that they speak today in these damn Pentecostal churches is a fluid vocalizing of speech like syllables that lack any readily comprehending meaning of any readily comprehending meaning don't have no goddamn meaning to it. And what is that? It's no other than vain babblings concerning 2 Timothy 2 and 16. All right? Because when you do your research, man, if you really do your research on tongues, like I said, I got a treat for you guys today, man. There was no place in the Bible where, where, where Christ and his disciples started speaking some damn gibberish that no one was understanding, y'all. No one, no one did this in the Bible. Nobody did that in the Bible. Like I say right here, this is a manifestation of evil spirits. No one did that in the Bible. And that's not the Holy Spirit. And there's no place in the Bible where disciples start speaking that, man. Okay? So, like I said, we was dealing with Acts chapter 2. We're going to go back right there. I'm just trying to give you some history on tongues. We were dealing with Acts chapter 2 um, about speaking in tongues. It was the day of Pentecost where the Jews came from different places in the earth. And they understood different languages. The disciples understood different languages, man, for the very first time. Okay? So, we were dealing with this to show you, man. Concerning um, Acts chapter 2, um, when we go back up, Acts chapter 2 and 5, we can see these Jews, these devoted mans out of every nation under heaven, man. Okay, they came to Jerusalem to worship. And like I say, the, basically the primary outline for this chapter is in order for them to take the gospel back to their respective places, these devoted men right here, these Jews, these devoted men, these devoted men the, out of every nation. In order for these people, these devout Jews, to take the gospel to their respective country, Peter had to understand their language, y'all. To understand their language. Peter had to understand their language in a different language. When he spoke the gospel, basically when Peter and the disciples, when they spoke the gospel, it came out in the language of their country so they can take the gospel back to their respective country. This is what this is what all, Acts chapter 2 is all about. Okay? So what you see right here, man, this this is a goddamn circus, man. This is a joke, man. This 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 is this is satanic activity at its highest peak, man. Because speaking in tongues basically comes from the the you can say speaking in tongues comes from the god of Bacchus of ancient Rome. That's what speaking in tongues comes from. I'm gonna show you this because in the early 1900s, before it was done in the Baptist church, I'm just trying to show you, man. Um. Um, in the early 1900s, in the Baptist church, uh, in the early 1900s, before it was done, in the Baptist church, down south, there was rituals held. So before the 1900s, man, uh, it, it, it was done, it, it was done, you could say, basically in the south. That, before that, it was snakes that was brought into the sanctuary where people would speak and they would channel demonic energy using snakes, man. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. They were they were channeling the money energy energy using using snakes. Okay? It's no joke. And like I said, it was synonymous to sorcery and voodoo. And the difference today is that the snakes no longer remain in the rituals, but the saints kept the speaking of speaking of the spirit of Bacchus, man. 
Because before the mid-1800s, there was no speaking in tongue in black churches. I'm trying to show you the truth. There was no speaking in tongue in black churches. I'm going to show you again. Before the 1800s, there was no speaking in tongue in black churches. It was introduced during the Pentecostal movement. Before then, it was called voodooism. So before the 1800s, there was no damn speaking in tongue in the churches, man. Do your research. Like I was telling you in the early 1900s, before it was done in the Baptist church down south, there were rituals held. Snakes was in the, brought in the sanctuary when people spoke and channeled demonic energy using snakes. Before the 1800s, there was no damn speaking in tongues in the churches, man. This ain't nothing but the ancient spirit of Bacchus. I want to show you this, too. I want to show you this. I don't know if they're going to pull him up. But um, I don't know. I just typed in Bacchus. It don't seem like they're pulling them up. So we're going to go right here, man. I'm going to go to images. And I'm going to show you, man. Because you guys need to see this, man. You guys need to see this. Speaking in tongues is all. Church of Nations live service. Wise man Christopher ministers Wait a minute, just a second, word and power to the people in the name. Okay, let me cut. I had to cut that off. Okay, but anyways, tongues. Like I said, it's just speaking in another language. And the shit that they speak today in church is basically of the ancient uh goddess, the ancient god Bacchus. Let me bring that up, man. Show you this. If I can if if if, if it can pull it up, I want you guys to see this, man. That's who it is, man. I hope you see what's going on. Let me see. And like I said, man, these pictures are whitewashed anyway. This is not the original picture, but I just want to give you a picture to show you what I'm talking about. As you guys can see, man, this is uh, Bacchus, man. And that's where speaking in tongues come from. The god Bacchus in ancient Rome, where they would get together and uh, they would they they would they would basically drink wine and become intoxicated, and they would play music and they would play tamarines until they was infested with a demon, man. Until Bacchus took control of their body. That's what speaking in tongues is all about. But for the sake of time, man, I'm gonna go and finish this up right quick so you can see. Basically, on part two, we're going to First Corinthians now. Concerning part two, we're going to First Corinthians because we don't want to prolong any uh, mo no more time. We have taken up a lot of time. So we're going to 1 Corinthians 14. All right. Do your research on Bacchus. You'll see that speaking in tongue comes from Bacchus, man. And um, I want to show you something else, too. Because when they claim, like, the Holy Spirit, another thing, it's, it's so much stuff that I got to go over in the nick of time. So I'm going to have to do several videos. But I'll finish this tongue lesson up. And then maybe we can get into really what the Holy Spirit is. So this still this is still concerning speaking in tongues. First, first Corinthians is fourteen and one. All right, so uh, we're gonna wrap this up in a nutshell, and uh, we'll we'll close out with a lesson. First Corinthians is fourteen and two. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, basically an unknown language. Let's not forget that. For he that speaketh in an unknown language, speaketh not unto man, but unto power. For no man understanding him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries? Yeah, because he that speaketh in an unknown language speaketh not into man. Because men can't understand the language that he's speaking in unless there's a unless there are a, an interpreter around. But a man that speaketh in an unknown language speaking not to man, but in, but into God, but into power. You know why? Because the Most High created all languages. He created every language in the earth. He can understand every language, no matter what it is. He can understand it. Okay. All right. But it says, for no man understanding him. Why? No man can understand you if you're speaking in an unknown tongue. If speaking in an unknown language, basically, because an unknown tongue is just another word for unknown language. No man can understand you if you're speaking in Spanish and he don't know of Spanish. No man can understand you, understand you if you're speaking in Japanese and he don't know of Japanese. No man can understand you if you're speaking in Chinese and he don't know of Chinese. You get the picture? So how be it in the spirit he speak mysteries? Yeah, because he speak mysteries because it's a mystery to you because you don't understand the dialect or the language or that or, or that particular country. All right. First Corinthians 14 3. But he that prophesies speaking unto man to the edification and 
exhortation and comfort. So it talking, it's talking about prophecy. He said he that prophesied, the man that prophesied, he speak it to man to edification. Prophesy, basically, when you prophesy to a man, you speak it to him to edify him and exhort and, and exhortation and comfort. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, basically an unknown language, edify himself. Why? Because the unknown tongue that he's speaking in, if he if if, if, if a Chinese man is speaking Chinese around a bunch of people that speak ending that speak that speak English, that Chinese man that's speaking in that unknown tongue. Edify himself because the people around him speak English. They can't understand the tongue that he's speaking in. Why? Because they don't speak simply speak Chinese. So the Chinese person that's speaking his Chinese language around a bunch of around a bunch of people that speak English, he's only edifying him edifying himself because nobody nobody is not edified on how to speak Chinese. But he that prophesied edify the church. So he's telling you that prophecy is better than speaking in tongues. He that prophesied edify the church. Okay. It says, for I would that ye spake with tongues. And the reason why Paul said is because Paul was gifted in tongues. Paul spoke three different languages. Paul spoke Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. And that's why he said, I would that ye spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For what? For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues. Greater is he that prophesied than he that can speak various languages and, and, and various languages. Except he interpreted. See? So when you speak various languages, when you speak in tongues, basically speak various languages, speak foreign languages, speaking in Chinese, Japanese, speaking in Spanish, speaking, speaking in Swahili, whatever you're speaking in, you need an interpreter. That's why he said, except he interpreted that church may receive edif edif edifying or edification. So if I go to a church and start speaking in an unknown tongue, if I don't have an interpreter, the church is not going to be edified on what I'm, what I'm saying. The only way the church can be edified on what I'm saying is whatever language I'm speaking in, if I'm speaking in a foreign language, I need to have an interpreter there so what the church can may receive edifying. 1 Corinthians 14, 6. It says, Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, speaking in another language, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. So if I come speaking with another language, what shall I profit you? I'm not going to profit you a damn thing. Why? Because I came to you speaking in a language that you're not familiar with. I came to you speaking in a language that you're not that you're not assimilated to. So what shall I profit you? Nothing. Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge, unless I speak to you and tell you what this tongue is, and if I transfer this tongue or translate this tongue, what say it profit you? Nothing. See? Or prophesying or by doctrine. What is gonna do you? What damn good is gonna do you if I come to you speaking in Chinese and you're not familiar with Chinese? First Corinthians is 14, 7. And even things without life given sound, rather pipe or heart, except they give a distinction in sounds, how shall it be known what is pipe to heart? What Paul is telling you here that life given sound, all instruments that were made, rather it be a pipe. Whether it be a harp, whether it be a keyboard, whether it be some type of instrument, flute, saxophone, bassoon, baritone, trombone, tuba, whatever it may be. Instruments have basically a life-giving sound. And itself, they can give it a certain distinction in the sound. How shall it be known what is piped the heart? Yeah, because each instrument gives a certain distinction, Okay. Every instrument that you play gives a certain distinction in the sound. When you bang on a piano, it makes the sound of a piano. When you play the flute, it makes the sound of a flute. When you play the saxophone, it makes the sound of a saxophone. When you play the harp, it makes the sound of a harp. Okay, if I strum a harp, if I strum across a harp and it makes the sound of a of a drum, then if I if, if I strum across a harp and it makes the sound of a drum, then you can see right there how shall it be known what is piped the harp. If I play a saxophone and it start making the sound of a flute, how shall it be known what is piped the heart? If I play some drums, if I start banging on drums and uh, they start making the sound, they start making the sound of a trombone, how shall it be known what is piped the heart? Every, what he's telling you that he's comparing, Paul is comparing instruments to languages, okay? Because he's saying basically 
that every instrument have a certain distinction in the sounds. Just like every language have a certain distinction. Every language have, uh, every foreign language have a certain distinction in the sound. It's, it's not one language out there that have a, uh, uh, that, 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 that does not have a distinction. That cannot be interpreted and then that and cannot be translated. But you can't tr translate this shit right here, man. I'm sorry. You can't do it. Let me back up. You can't translate this, man. Let me see. Can I get this over again? Let me skip through it to show you guys. You cannot translate this, man. Okay, because it's not a, a, a language that give a certain distinct sound. It's not a language that give a certain distinct sound. Let me fast forward a little bit. Now he's beginning to pray for the two young men, but he's not giving the language that have a distinct sound. He's giving a weird language, an unknown language, an odd language that can, there's no interpreters around. Okay. Where's the interpreters? No interpreters around. The, con the congregation don't know what he's saying. So you can see right there, man, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 7, every instrument have a distinction that give a certain sound. Every language have a distinction that give a certain sound. And that shit that he was just saying, that doesn't have a certain distinction. Because it can't be interpreted. It is a bogus language. It is a, is a, is a language of Babylon. It's a mystified, demonic spirit language that cannot be interpreted, man. And that's coming straight out of the demonic realm. Like it or not, man. If anybody in the church, you claim yourself Christian, yes, I am against you if you're a Christian. If you're Christian and you speaking that gibberish, I am against your ass, man. And I pray that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall deliver you from that goddamn demonic ass spirit, man. Straight up. First Corinthians 14 and 8. I'm going to show you this. Let's continue to read. First Corinthians 14 and 8. Like it or love it, love it or leave it. I don't give a damn, man. First Corinthians 14 and 8. For if the trumpet give a uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? Yeah, because when someone blows on a trumpet, it don't give a damn wicked ass sound or a weird ass sound. When somebody blows on a trumpet, it make a certain sound to prepare everyone for battle. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you this. First Corinthians 14 and 9. So likewise, ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? Now, that's what I'm telling you. That's why 1 Corinthians 14 and 7, he was using he was using instruments. He was using pipes. He was using harps. How they give basically a certain distinction in the sound. He was comparing instruments to languages because languages also give a certain distinction in sounds. And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 9. So likewise, except ye utter by tongue, except ye utter by language, that words easy to be understood, instead of speaking in all different types of various languages, don't come to me speaking in Chinese. I don't know what that shit means. Don't come to me speaking in Japanese. Don't come to me speaking in any other language. Don't come to me speaking in French. Don't come and speaking to me in Germany, Poland, Irish, whatever language you may come in, Mongolian, whatever language you come to me speaking in, please make sure it's the language that I have assimilated to, which, which is English. Because if you come to me in a foreign language and, and you are in another language, it says, so likewise, except you utter by a tongue or language, words to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? I don't know how to speak no damn Japanese, Japanese, Chinese, and any other foreign language. For ye shall speak into the air. Yeah, because you come to speak and you, you, you come to, you come speaking to someone in a foreign language which they is not familiar with. It's, it's as though you're speaking in the air, man. All right? First Corinthians 14, 10. There are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world. Yeah, so many kinds of voices and languages in the world. And none, and none of them is without signification. All language can be signified. All language, all languages can be interpreted. All language can be analyzed. There's not one language on the earth that cannot be signified and verified. Okay, and verified. All language can be translated and interpreted. 
But this language, as you hear right here, cannot. Why? Because it's not a language of signification. It's not a it's not a language that have a certain distinct sound. This cannot be interpreted. How in the hell is somebody supposed to interpret that? Think about it for a second. How in the hell on God's green earth can somebody interpret such gibberish? That's why we went over this, y'all. That's why we went over this, and that's why we're going over it again. Because we're going to put an end to this Christian movement. We're going to put an end to this Satanic, pagan-ass movement, man. And hopefully you will wake up after this lesson, okay? Hopefully you'll wake up. March 6 and 7, then we'll get back in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 10. We're going to go to March 6 and 7. I want to show you that. All this is based on speaking in tongues in the church. It says, this is this is Mark 6 and 7. I want to say this is the one. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, it could be Matthew. It could be Matthew. Let me, let me type in Matthew 6 and 7. Just a second. We will get it, though. We will get the verse. I think it's this. Yeah, this is Matthew 6 and 7. Excuse me, Salahi. Matthew 6 and 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. So when you pray, when you pray, you don't supposed to use vain repetitions. What is a repetition? Something that is said repeatedly over and over, consistently over and over again. Such as, That's vain repetition. And they say, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, as the other damn Gentile heathenistic nations do. For they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. Yeah, because the apostles do that, man. These false-ass apostles in the church, these false-ass pastors, they think that they will be heard. Let me show you, man. I want y'all to pay attention to this. For they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. Because they try to do this shit to make them seem so holy in, 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 in the middle of ceremonial services. They do this to make themselves seem so holy. But this ain't nothing but damn vain repetitions, y'all. Vain repetitions. Stuff that's said repeatedly over and over again. Listen. Damn vain repetitions. That's vain repetitions. Nothing new said. Just things consistently said over and over and over again. Vain repetitions. And he said, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Don't do that. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Yeah, they want all the glory and think they shall be heard for their much speaking. But what you fake ass Pharisees don't realize, death is coming upon you if you don't repent, man. All right, let's go back to 1 Corinthians. All right. And uh, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 10. There are, it may be so, many kinds of voices in the world. And none of them is without signification because all different type of languages can be can be can be translated. First Corinthians is 14 and 11. It says, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, if I can't speak a foreign language and I don't know what he's speaking in, if he's speaking in Chinese. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh the barbarian. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a barbarian if I don't know what he's speaking. I shall be just like a barbarian if I can't interpretate what he's speaking. And you can see concerning 1 Corinthians 14 and 11, this guy is a barbarian. Let me show you. I'm going over the video again. These guys are barbarians. These two guys are barbarians. Now, why are they barbarians? Let me go back over the scriptures. Because he said that, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice... If I can't understand this goddamn gibberish, demon-ass, satanic language that you're speaking in, if I know not the meaning of that voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. So you can might as well say these guys are barbarians because they can't understand that shit he's speaking, man. So these guys are like barbarians that don't know what he's speaking. Don't know what he's saying. 
because the language that he's speaking is not within, is, 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 is without signification. The language that he's speaking is not, that can't be interpreted. It's, it, it doesn't have a distinct. It, it doesn't have a distinct sound. It's just gibberish, and that's very dangerous, man. And these boys can't even see that, man, because they don't know the truth, man. They in darkness. They don't know, and they open themselves up to more spirits, and it's sad. And they is like barbarians because they don't know what this guy is speaking. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian to me. Okay, you see that. Now, let's continue to read. It says, 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. Even so ye, for as even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may assail to edify the church. Yeah, man, you need to edify the church. Stop speaking that gibberish. 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, unknown language. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown language, unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret it. See? Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret it. It, it, need, it needs to be somewhere, somewhere, it needs to be someone around that he may interpret it, what these guys are saying. But you look right here, there's no interpreter. There's no one around to interpret what this guy is saying. This is out of order. Where's the interpreter? Where's the interpreter? Where's the interpreter? Where is the interpreter? He's not around. And even if he was, there's no distinction. There's no signification and what it is, and what this pastor is stating and what this pastor is saying. First Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, if I pray, like you, if I pray in an unknown language, if I pray in another language, if, 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 I, if I pray, uh, if I pray in Japanese, my spirit pray. But my understanding is unfruitful. You know why? Because other people cannot understand around me what I'm saying. If I'm speaking Japanese, if I'm praying in Japanese, it says my spirit pray, but my understanding is, un is unfruitful. Why? Because no one around me can understand Japanese. So if I'm praying in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 13. If I'm praying in an unknown tongue, which is the Japanese, unknown tongue, unknown language, which is Japanese, Somebody needs to be around that he may interpret it what I'm saying. Because if they don't interpret it what I'm saying, then it's an unknown tongue and my spirit pray, but my understanding is unfruitful until someone comes to interpret what I'm saying to edify the rest of the people that don't know Japanese around me. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say, See, how shall he occupy the room that people, occupy the room of the unlearned people? Say, Amen, at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understand not what thou said. How in the hell you shall occupy a room of, of unlearned people, greenhorns, people that don't know about the Bible, that don't know a verse from a chapter or a chapter from a verse. How shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at your giving of thanks and seeing he understand it, not what thou said? Why you going to do this, man? Seeing that there's no interpreters around. To interpret what you're saying. Seeing that nobody in church. Is getting full understanding on what you're telling these guys. How in the hell you got a tendency. And got the mind of closing the service out by saying amen. How in the hell. you? How in the hell you got that mind. Of trying to read a damn benediction before the service out. And saying amen. Giving thanks. Seeing that nobody in the damn church. Understand what you are saying. Understand not what thou says. Man, this is a damn joke. First Corinthians 14, 17. For thou verily give it thanks well, but the other is not edified. See? You giving thanks, you praying, saying all this stuff, 
But these people are not edified because why? There's no interpreter around. And your language is not without your language is without signification and it's in it and it's without edification and it's and it's there are no interpreter around to interpretate what you're saying, man. So these two guys are in the damn dark and don't know their way, man, because it's sad, y'all. But we're gonna continue on. Oh man. First Corinthians 14, 17, for thou ver verily give thanks well, but the other is not edified. Who is not edified? Who is not edified when it says the other is not edified concerning 1 Corinthians 14, 17? These two guys right here, they ain't even edified on what this guy is telling them because they don't even have an interpreter. This 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 wicked ass Pharisee can be putting anything on these guys in the demonic language that they're unfamiliar with. He can be saying anything. He can be cursing death on these guys. He can be causing cursing death and destruction on these guys' soul that they don't even know of because there's no interpreter around. And like I say, even if it was an interpreter around, they can't understand his gibberish. See, there's no interpreter around. That's bullshit, man. If you don't like my language, I don't give a damn. You ain't got to watch this video, okay? You ain't got to watch this video if you don't agree. But what you're going to find out is that the true prophets is back on the earth. And we speaking the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we crying aloud and we sparing out. We not playing with you goddamn Christians. We not playing with your asses, man. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank my power. I speak with tongues more than ye all. So Paul is telling you, man, I can speak with tongues more than you all. Because I speak, I, Paul was gifted with tongues. He spoke three different languages, like I said. He spoke in the Hebrew language, he spoke in the Grecian language, and he spoke in the Latin language. 1 Corinthians 14, 19. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words of an unknown tongue. So Paul tells you, man, in the church, I had rather speak. I had rather speak. Man, let me show you something. I had rather speak five words with some understanding. I would rather speak five words with understanding. Then I might go in a damn church and speak 10,000 words in an unknown damn tongue that nobody don't know about. I'd rather speak five words that somebody going to get, understand what I'm saying, be edified on what I'm saying, and learn about what I'm saying, I'd rather speak five words and speak 10 damn thousand words than speak 10,000 words in an unknown tongue that somebody don't know damn about. Like you see this right here. It's bullshit. I rebuke that in the spirit of your hard body. Send me on a shot. Whoever put that shit up online should be ashamed of themselves. All right? 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Be not children in understanding. How be it in malice? Be ye children, but in understanding be man. Now, okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 21. In the law it is written, with man of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people. Now, we saw that, man. We read that beginning with part one. When we started off in part one, we went over Isaiah. 28 and verse 11. That's what that's the precept concerning 1 Corinthians 14, 21. With man of other tongues, it says, with man of other tongues and other lips will I speak to this people. That's talking about Isaiah 28 and verse 11. That's the precept to that. And yet for all, they will not hear me. We went over that already because it's various languages in the world that uh, is being spoken through the gospel. The, the, the gospel is put in various languages, various tongues, and, and we just thank Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for being able to uh, somehow make a way for this gospel to be conveyed in different languages, various languages, and this this gospel this gospel to be in various languages so they may understand. But even though it's in various languages, and even though this it is 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 many Bibles that in various languages all over the world, it says they will not hear me. Say the Most High, you just got certain niggas out there. Certain speaks and tomahawks out there that's not gonna listen to the most high. You got some Negroes, some Hispanics, and some Native American Indians, which are the Israelites. You Negroes, you Hispanics, you Native American Indians, you are the real Hebrews, you are the Israelites. 
But not all of your ass is going li to listen to the Most High, man. Even though you don't put this gospel in various languages, you still not going to listen to him. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign. Languages are for a sign, basically. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But, but prophesy and serve it not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Now, like I said, I'm going to continue to read on. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, all speak with languages, and there come and those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Okay, because if you speak and basically, if I go into, say for instance, I got some brothers in the faith that was raised up in, uh, I got, say for instance, that I got some brothers in the faith that was raised up in, uh, let's just say they was raised in uh, Afghanistan, all right? And I, and I was invited to come to their church in Afghanistan. So I flew across the waters to attend their service in Afghanistan. And when I came to their church, they were speaking the Afghanistanian language. Okay. And I walked in the church, everybody speaking the Afghanistanian language. Our brothers. If, if therefore the whole church become together in one place and they all speak with tongues. Basically, I went into this church and my brothers were speaking to all, all the Afghanistanian language. And, and they're coming to those that are learned, such as me. I came into their church that I that I didn't know. I didn't know the Afghanistan in your language. I didn't know that language they were speaking. So I was unlearned when I came in. Or uh, unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Yeah, because when I come into that particular church in Afghanistan, hear all my brothers speaking in the Afghanistan in your language, will I not say, hey, man, these people going berserk, man. These people, these people damn dumb, man. These people don't lost their damn mind. These people are a bunch of lunatics, man. Will I not say that? Yeah, of course I will say that. You know why? Because I'm not familiar with the Afghanistan in your language. So it seems as though these people are crazy, man. Until I understand what they're speaking into. To somebody translate to to somebody translate what they're saying. First Corinthians 14, 24. But if I prophesy, but if I all prophesy, and there come and one that believe it not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. Because prophecy is better than speaking in tongues, man. Okay? 1 Corinthians 14, 25. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he would worship the Most High and report that the Most High is in youth of a truth. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Well, I'm going to, I'll just continue to read. Just in your patience, possess your souls, man. This is good. A good lesson for you guys. Just be patient. The lesson is almost over with. But you really need this for your edification. First Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you have a song, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done into edifying. So you can see that, man. It's 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 a how is it then, brethren, when when ye come together. Every one of you have a song, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done and edifying. Whatever you do, man, like I say, when you come together, whether it's a song you bringing forth, whether it's some type of doctrine you bringing forth, whether it's a different language you bringing forth, whether it's a revelation that you bringing forth, a prophecy that you bringing forth, a prophetic message that you bringing forth, I said, or oh, had an interpretation. Whatever you bring forth, let all things be done and edifying. Make sure they get what you're saying. Make sure they don't leave empty-minded. Make sure they don't leave unsophisticated. Make sure they leave with a clear edification on what you have said. All right. First Corinthians 14, 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, unknown language, let it be two or at the most three. Let it be two or three or at the most, and that by course. And let one interpret it. So if any man speak in an unknown tongue, or unknown language, a foreign language, if any man speak in something that you may not be familiar with, I'm going to give you an example. If any man speaking in Japanese that you're not familiar with because you know you, you have known English your whole entire life, then it should be two or three at the most. And that by course, let one interpret it. Let one interpret that language that he's speaking in. So that you can be informed on what he's saying. If you don't know what he's saying. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be done. But you can see right here. There's no interpreter. 
It's supposed to be two or three men, at least two or three men to, to monitor and at least one interpreter to interpretate to these guys that he's praying for, to interpretate what he's saying. But there's no interpreter around, man. Okay, so that's out of order, man. 1 Corinthians 14, 29. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. So let the prophets speak two or three. Let the prophets speak. Let the prophets translate whatever this foreign language may be. It says, and let the other judge. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 30. If anything be revealed to another that sit it by, let the first hold his peace. 1 Corinthians 30, uh, 14, 31. It says, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. 1 Corinthians 14, 32, and, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Yeah, the reason why I say the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets because if you was an ancient prophet back in, if, you, if you was a prophet back in ancient times, in the reincarnation, you're going to be a prophet in today's time. If you was a, if you was a, a priest back in ancient time, in reincarnation, you're going to be a priest in this time, okay? For the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. So these ancient prophets are back on the earth today. They've just been reincarnated. Okay, all these prophets are back on the earth today in this present world. For the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14.33. For most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Because the most high, let me tell you something. For the power of God, the most high is not the author of confusion, man. He's not the author of confusion. You got you got 10 different people speaking in tongues. You got 10 people in the church speaking in tongues at one time, but there's no interpreter around. There's no two or three men to interpretate what the hell they are saying. That's confusion. Like, this is confusion. This is a primary example of confusion. That shit is confusion, man. And what did the scripture say in 1 Corinthians 14, 33? The most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So you can see right there, man, like I said, when you in these churches, man, and you see this activity going on, you should question yourself, should I be here or not? You should question yourself, is this of the most high or is this of Satan? You should question yourself, is did, did, any, did any person do this in the Bible? Did they do this? You should question yourself, man. For real. You should question yourself on these things. What were they done in the Bible? Because you're gonna find out that they wasn't done in the Bible. Okay? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Okay. This is out of order. That shit was out of order, man. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently in order. Okay. Let all things be done decently in order. So all I'm saying is all things must be done decently and in order. And this is not in order. I'm sorry. That is that is a damn disgrace. That's not biblical. So I hope you brothers and sisters understand. This is part two of speaking in tongues. And like I said, man, that's not biblical, son, in all the Holy Bible. No matter what you think, no matter how you may perceive it, no matter how you may try to justify it, the shit just is not biblical. I'm sorry. So if you have any comments to take up with me, uh, feel free to take them up with me, man. But just know, in spite of taking your come up, comments up with me, you to taking your comment, you taking your comments up with the Most High. Okay, so you take your comments, you tell me negative comments, you tell me this is not of the, you tell me what I'm saying is blasphemy or whatever you may say, I'm going to tell you straight up, the hell with you, the hell with you two-third niggas, the hell with you two-third Hispanics, the hell with you two-third Native Americans, and the rest of you Gentile nations that don't want to get with this truth, death to America, death to you two-thirds, and any one of you dumbass niggas that can't see when you read the Bible, speaking in tongues is not concerning this. Shallow wound. I'm out.